Grace and mercy and peace be with you from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We are here on this Christmas Eve to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ into this world. That is obvious. But what I want you to hear this afternoon is that you need Jesus. And not just you, but your entire family tree needs Jesus. So does my family tree. And so did the family tree of Jesus himself. I'm not sure if any of you have ever gotten into tracing your family trees or your family genealogy. Has anybody ever really gotten into that? Or no, not too many. A couple. Uh, a couple of years back, my older brother Seth got uh, a subscription to Ancestry.com. Uh, and he, he spent quite a while tracing back our, our family tree. And, and just a couple of days ago, I actually looked at what he had put together for the first time ever, and it was, it was actually quite fascinating. Uh, most of the branches of the family tree that, that he put together, uh, they go back to about my third or, or fourth great-grandparent, which is, which is kind of fascinating to see, but there's this one branch of our family tree that he traced and it goes all the way back to the year 590. To the year 590 in Denmark. If, if you trace it on this family tree, if you go to my mom, and then her mom, and then her dad, and stay with her dad's family, it goes all the way back. And even the family name stays the same for a long time. I had I relatives in that branch of the tree that were born in the United States in 1672 before the United States was even the United States. If you follow that branch of, of the tree, it, it takes you to England. And in England, in the years of thousand or something, we run into people named Sir Ralph and, and Lord Henry. Guys named Sir and, and Lord living in castles. And then, and then we even get to the King of Norway and the Queen of Sweden. Look at that royalty. <laughs> And then, and then they, even, they end up back in Denmark in the year 590, and then, and then there it stops. And it was very fascinating to, to think about this. And as I got looking at this family tree and getting kind of swallowed up, and I, I started thinking about these people. And, and as, I was, as, as, as I was thinking about it, I started thinking, wow, these are real people with real lives, real stories, real struggles, Real joys, real sins. I started thinking about, I started thinking about their their lives, and, and I started wondering, wow, I, I wonder if uh, I wonder if anybody, uh, I wonder if any of those people had any of my personality quirks. You know, I wonder if these uh, Sir Ralph, you know, had a, had a dry sense of humor like me. I wonder if I get my, my broad shoulders and broad hips from, uh, from the English folk or from, from, uh, from my Finnish, uh, uh, Finnish family side. I, I don't know. It, you know, we started looking at these family trees, and, it, and it's fascinating to see where we've come from. And, and as I started looking at that, I, I started realizing, wow, this, this is my family. There's a lot of differences that exist, a lot of different cultures that exist, a lot of different family quirks, but there's something... Something common in all of it. We're all sinners. Every single person in the branch of that tree are sinners. Sinners in need of Jesus Christ. I come from a long line of sinners. My family tree needs Jesus. And so does your family tree. And so did the family tree of Jesus. I read from you from, from the beginning of the Gospel of Matthew. I stood up here and, and I read a whole bunch of names for you. And I watched as your eyes glazed over as I was reading these names. And some of you were thinking, man, that guy's really good at pronoun pronouncing names. He must have gone to school for a long time. And I was just making it up. All right? <laughs> I just stumbled through it too. You just got to say it confidently. Uh, and, and, and so, so as, as, as we were looking through that, it, that was the, the family tree of Jesus. That 
was the family tree of Jesus? But most people, when they get when they when they read the Bible, if they get to a list of names like that, most people just skip right over it or just skim right through it. And I'm guilty of that too, because most of the time we don't know how to pronounce the names, or we don't know anything about these people, and we just say, well, what's the big deal? Well, it actually is a big deal. It is a big deal. It's a big deal to see where Jesus came from, to see who his ancestors were. When genealogies are written in the Bible, the people who wrote those actually wrote it for a purpose. And it's more than just to give you a list of ancestry. They're actually telling you a story. And they're making a point. And Matthew is making a point to us this night by telling us and choosing these people to present before us. And some of you may know some of these people. If you take the time and look into these people, these are real people. All those names I read for you are real people with real lives, with real joys, with real struggles, with real sins. And if you take the time and look in the Bible, their names show up in the Bible and we can read their stories. And I'm not going to tell you the stories of all of these people, but I do want to point out a few of them. Because Matthew chose to tell us about a few of these people. And so, first of all, First of all, before I even get into it, Matthew chose to list four women in this genealogy, which is actually a really big deal. It was very uncommon to list women in genealogies unless you're making a specific point about those women. And so Matthew highlights four women, but he also highlights some other people and some situations, some big-time sins. And so I want to point out a couple of these people to you. First of all, first of all, the very first woman that's listed in this genealogy from Jesus, the very first woman, her name is Tamar. Tamar was a Gentile woman. For those of you who don't know what that means, that means a non-Jewish woman. So if anybody ever tells you Jesus came, Jesus was, he came from a perfect family, the perfect Jewish family. No, he didn't. He has people in his ancestry that were Gentiles, and so the big point of that means, guess what? Jesus came for all people, not just Jews, he came for all people. It, it goes on from the next woman that's listed, her name is Rahab. Rahab. Rahab was also a Gentile, and she was a prostitute. An actual prostitute. She lived in the city of Jericho, and when Joshua was leading the Israelites into the promised land, they got to the city of Jericho. And, and if you've read your Bible, maybe, maybe you've heard this story where Joshua and the Israelites <laughs> marched around the city of Jericho. And when I was growing up, we sang a song, Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, 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 Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, and the walls came crumbling down. No, just me. I didn't make it up. Other people have sang that song, I'm serious. Uh, but, but in that city, there was this woman named Rahab who was a prostitute. Joshua sent spies into the city to see how he could take it over. Rahab, the prostitute, protected those spies. Because she offered protection to them, after the city of Jericho was destroyed, Rahab went and lived with the Israelites. When she lived with the Israelites, she married one of them. And then through that line, Jesus is born. One of Jesus' great-great-great-grandmas was a Gentile prostitute. Further on in that line, it talks about David and the wife of Uriah. David, King David, the faithful king, the very first king of Israel, the one who wrote most of the Psalms in our Bible, that David had a relationship with another guy's wife. The poor lady's name isn't even mentioned. Her name was Bathsheba. David, the king, watched as the neighbor lady, Bathsheba, was taking a bath, and as king, he wanted to have her, and so guess what? He did have a relationship with her, and to cover up his tracks, he sent her husband, Uriah, to the front lines of battle, where his chances of getting killed would be greater, and guess what? He got killed, and so David's tracks were covered, and he continued to have a relationship with Bathsheba. So David is an adulterer and a murderer, and it's through that relationship that Solomon is born. 
And Solomon becomes king over Israel, the wise king, the one who writes words of wisdom in your Bible, the one who builds up the city of Jerusalem, comes from an adulterous relationship. I could go on and on. This is the, Matthew goes on to list a whole bunch of kings. Some of the kings he mentions were good kings. Some of them trusted in God. And some of those kings messed up royally. All puns intended. You get it? Kings messed up royally? Okay. Um, try. Jesus comes from a long line of sinners. Point simple. Jesus comes from a long line of sinners. Everybody in his family tree, sinners. Jesus' family tree didn't look anything different than yours. Jesus' family tree needed Jesus. See, despite their sin, despite their brokenness, despite their lack of faith, despite their selfishness, God chose to work in and through that family. God chose that, that family was just the kind of people that God likes to work with. God likes working with sinners. God likes working with sinners. Jesus' family tree needed them. What about your family tree? Does your family tree need Jesus? If you're taking the easy way out, of, you're probably just saying, well, yeah, of course my family tree needs Jesus. But where, where does your family tree need Jesus this Christmas Eve of 2015? Where do you need Jesus right now? Where do you need Jesus to come and be present with you? See, when Jesus comes, Jesus comes with the power of the Almighty God. Where do you need Jesus right now? In this congregation at St. Peter and Paul, we have a lengthy list of people that we pray for each week. We're battling serious health issues right now. It seems like the list of people that are battling cancer keeps growing. We just had a, a loved one uh, from our church who, who died last night. I was with the family this morning. Uh, Lorna Caspola's husband, John, died last night. They weren't sure what was going to happen to him, and now, now he's with the Lord. We have a long list of people who are battling serious illnesses, and I pray, I pray boldly for them, and I pray that you would as well. I pray for God to be God to them, to bring them an overwhelming sense of peace. And to bring healing, if at all possible. I know that some of you are facing shaky relationships right now, broken relationships. I pray for you that God will give you the ability to forgive and to reconcile with one another. I pray that for you. I know that some of you, some of your loved ones, are facing serious illness. Serious depression right now? I know that there are many of you that are facing serious darkness and you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. You're living in hopelessness. I pray for you that God would come and be present with you. That he would break into your darkness with his marvelous light and that you would know that darkness does not overcome the light of Jesus Christ. Where do you need Jesus to come and be? right now. Because you do need Jesus. You need him, my friends. You do, and your whole family tree needs Jesus to come and be present with you to save you from your sin. Matthew, he gave us that list of Jesus' family tree. He pointed out to us sinners, but then he didn't leave us hanging. Matthew went on to tell us why Jesus came into the world and how Jesus came into the world. Matthew recounts this story where, where an angel showed up to Joseph, the, you know, the Jesus stepfather. And an angel showed up to Joseph. Joseph knew that Mary was pregnant and, and he wasn't married to her and they hadn't had relations and she was pregnant and that was a bad deal. And Joseph wanted to, to divorce her quietly, just to separate from her. And an angel showed up and said, Joseph, don't worry about this. It's going to be okay. 
And Joseph, I, I want you to know that, that your that your soon-to-be wife Mary is going to give birth to the promised Messiah. And when he is born, I want you to name him Jesus. Because he's going to save people from their sins. That's what Jesus' name literally means. That word Jesus, that name, means he will save people from their sins. Joseph, I want you to name him Jesus because he's going to save people from their sins. My friends, you need Jesus because you need to be saved from your sins. So do I. And when I say that you need salvation from your sins, I'm not just talking about the bad things that you do. Sin is much more than the bad things that you do. Sin is much more than anything that you would do that would put you on Santa's naughty list. You need salvation from all sin and all of its effects in this world. So you need salvation from illness. You need salvation from the broken relationships. You need salvation from all of the injuries. You need salvation from all of the death. And guess what? Jesus came to save you from all of that. And how does Jesus come? Well, Matthew quotes from the book of Isaiah, a prophecy which says, when Jesus comes, he's going to come as Emmanuel, 